Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. Uh, today's show is another in our series from the Price Variants on uh, ghouls, goblins, and werewolves, and a whole bunch of monsters today. Um, it was actually kind of interesting. Just a little bit of a setup, a little bit of a, like FYI, I guess. Uh, we actually intended to uh, do two shows, uh, one this week and the one the following week. This week was supposed to be werewolves and mummies. And for some reason, I was thinking that we're doing next week's show, <laughs> which is um, uh, ghosts and, uh, you know, you know, goblins or whatever, ghoulies or something like that. So um, today we're doing it a little bit of a mix <laughs> because I got my stuff totally mixed up. So um, I'm going to, you know, show you some cool things, just the wrong theme. Um, <laughs> so enjoy that. Um, but yeah, Mark, it's great to have you on the show again. Let's do this. Yeah, it's great to be here. So I've prepared for um, I've prepared for werewolves and mummies. So I've got a lot of girls and ghosts, but so I'm sure we'll make it work. Right, I'm gonna mm -hmm. start off <laughs> um, with, uh, and I had to struggle quite hard to find uh, werewolves and mummies. Um, I've got very few mummies. I've got more werewolves. Uh, right. So I'm going to show you some stuff here. This is um, mm -hmm. this is a Marvel UK comic. OK, for, dating from 1975. Oh. Um, and it's Dracula Lives. So Marvel UK um, sort of uh, started reprinting. Um, a number of the US comics. And this Dracula Lives came from, uh, that was actually number two. I haven't actually got number one. I'm actually, I'm actually stalking one on, um, on eBay at the moment. It's on an auction. It's only at five pounds at the moment. So it comes with a poster as well. Um, but so what's interesting about this is it's three-parter. You get a story about Dracula. You get one of the werewolf by night stories and you get a Frankenstein story in every issue. Um, so that's cool. Yeah. It's always Dracula on the cover. <laughs> he obviously sells more mm -hmm. Frankenstein or um, werewolf by night, but inside, as you can see, we've got uh, some werewolf by night uh, reprints. Um, and these are UK uh, Marvel UK. So, we can't afford color like you Americans can, <laughs> or you Canadians and Americans. Is, uh, it, is this is this a magazine size? It looks yeah, a little bit bigger. It's, it's larger. Yeah, so this is a typical UK co of the time, typical UK comic size. They were this sort of size. So yes, they are larger. They don't fit in. Um, you know, they don't the fit. In, they don't fit in all the nice mylar bags and stuff. Um, mm. so, and they're also, I think they will grade these, but they grade them as magazines. They cost more to get graded. So nobody ever gets them. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's kind of annoying, but okay. Yeah. And so there, there's a whole series that, you know, there's another one here. Um, and so again, here we go. Issue number six. And it actually says at the top on this one, uh, the werewolf, um, and Frankenstein are appearing in here. And um, yeah, and we get another nice, uh, and you can see the art's much bigger. They just take the US art and blow it up, I think. Um, so we get another werewolf by night. Um, and this was produced weekly. Um, so they got through the stories really quickly. So they might have been reprints, but um, mm -hmm. you know, you'll get basically getting 50 issues a year. Um, so they quickly started running out of, <laughs> even though they were reprinted, <laughs> they were quickly running out, yeah, yeah. quickly running out. Of some of those covers look like the uh, ones from the American covers, like some that one right there that looked like the first one and that one looked like kind of like the American covers a bit. Yeah, I think they're. Uh, I've seen that cover before. Yeah, yeah, I think they do reproduce the covers actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, so a fun series. These are really these are not expensive to pick up because they're UK versions, um, and so even though they're nearly fifty years old, well they are fifty years old, seventy five, twenty five. Yeah, no, nearly fifty years old. Um, you know, you mm -hmm. can pick these up in a fairly decent condition for two or three dollars. 
you know they're um oh wow that's really very, cheap yeah 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 no they're not because people don't get done you get them graded americans aren't interested in them because they you know they're not american um you know 90, yeah yeah 90 percent of americans you know have never left america so <laughs> <laughs> I once went to, yeah. I once went to Florida and the, um, this woman asked me where I was from and I said um, I'm from England and she said is that near London <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like um, I, the same happens with Canada they, like, I, I go I'm from Canada it's like where's that <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah so yeah Americans are not so good on their geography <laughs> So uh, yeah, that's my first. Uh, so, my, so and although we're not doing vampires, and it's got Dracula on the front, all of these have got uh, werewolf by night. Werewolf. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I mean, I think uh, any of those um, early uh, horror, like I, I guess early like Bronze Age, I guess. Or yeah, those would be Bronze Age, right? Like seventies. Yeah. yeah, seventy-five. Those were yeah. Yeah. So those I think are becoming kind of hot right now because. Golden Age horror, it's, it's kind of weird. Most comics, uh, it, like the modern stuff, has become really expensive. So people are going to the Golden Age for, yeah. to get the originals. But with horror, pre-code horror was expensive for a while. And now they're going to the Bronze Age to sort of get cheaper horror <laughs> books. It's kind of gone the other way. So uh, yeah, the, a lot of those Bronze Age horror are really hot right now, especially Dracula, yeah. which I, I is mean, not I, the theme, but... You know, I'm going to hang on to these for another 20 years. You know, I might not be here, but my comics will. And, you know, and I think eventually these will get some value, you know, because they are yeah. they are the original stories. And as the as the as the American ones get more and more expensive, you know, the gap between that, the American pricing and the same thing in the UK is going to just get bigger and bigger. And somebody's going to go, hang on a minute, you know. Uh, yeah, may, I should maybe pick those up. <laughs> <laughs> but, um. You know, it's funny, like there's collectors and this is what happened with me. Like, um, you know, I collected Warren magazines. I should have brought some Warren. This would be uh, easy to bring yeah, like yeah, lots yeah, of Warren yeah. for it. Um, but I didn't uh, because I was being lazy. They're really buried. <laughs> like they're right over there. And they're really buried. And I'm like, ah, do I feel like getting out a bunch of magazines? Um, <laughs> so so um, what happens is though, people finish their, their American collection and then they go like, oh, but there's like these cool ones in other countries, you know, that are kind of, they go for the cover and they sometimes have a little bit different covers. Yeah. And yeah. They, so they usually start with the English ones, like Australian and Canadian editions and like British editions. And, you know, it kind of goes like that. Right. So, yeah, I, I can see those ones being hot later once people kind of get more into the yeah. genre. Yeah, I think so. But yeah. Okay. That's cool. I, I, I totally like that one i'm going to show um kind of a like halloween theme um set of books um this is like a, a series that was created um about the seduction of the innocent okay and it kind of reprints it reprints a lot of the golden age stuff um but the reason i actually got into it was well i collect so uh, so tea books like yeah. seduction of the innocent but um there's two reasons. One was the very first one is got a Dave Stevens cover. I love Dave Stevens. This is just a really great cover. It's called Destruction of Innocent. And it just prints a lot of golden age horror. Yeah. Horror and like stuff that would be in the Seduction of Innocent, right? So just a really great cover. It's a I nice like that. His good girl art. And yeah, and then so, you know, it's like a little series. So section isn't, this is, a, a, there was like multiple series, but right. it's all from, um, what's it called? Uh, Eclipse comics. Eclipse, yeah. So that's that one. And then there's like some Weiston, you know, you know, Bernie Rison. Uh, yeah, I like The guy that, that did Swamp I really like Bernie Rison art, yeah. Yeah, so, so lots of really great artists were involved. Like, I don't know, this is not one of them, but <laughs> so I'm going to sh just show a few. That's all right. Number that. three. The, the Dracula one? Yeah, I like that. Is it's that, okay. Is that Dracula? I like the right one better. Oh, it is Dracula. I thought it might have been a werewolf. No, it's got big teeth. Yes. No, it's, it's got, it's it's more Dracula like. Um, and then there's like a gypsy like one. I don't know. None of these have to actually, like, I don't know if there's any story 
from the seduction innocent that had gypsies, but <laughs> whatever. Um, <laughs> but, um, and then we got number five. Oh yeah, crime, yeah. Crime, yeah, see crime. And then another, it looks like another crime one oh, or like something. One. I'm not yeah, sure. That's nice, yeah. And yeah. those were eclipse. And then, yeah, so, and then I figured, hey, since I'm showing those, I should show one that's actually the seduction, from the seduction of the innocent, that's horror. So oh. This is kind of like a ghostly skeleton. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is Witch Tales uh, number 20. Not many people realize, like, even um, if you go to Key Collector Comics, they actually have a list of all the Sochi books. And this isn't in there. But this is mentioned in Destruction and Innocent. So it's like, uh, there's about, I say about 10 to 15 books that aren't on the, the Key Collector thing that are actually mentioned in Destruction and Innocent. And only people with the book actually know that they're in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> So um, this is one of them, uh, and it's one where basically, I, I think um, uh, Wortham had a real issue with people getting poked, either poked in the eye or just poked in general. Yeah. So the guy, the guy in this story kills his wife with a poker. Oh, <laughs> so, right. Okay. Well, um, that's, that's no good. Yeah. Done it with a knife. No, if you'd done it with a Yeah, it would have been fine. Yeah. But the poking, the poking really bothered him. Oh, no, no. So, no um, yeah, so that's why this was in the Seduction Innocent. It's yeah, kind of a cool book. Yeah, it is. Um, these, witches, these witches' tales, this one's in a low grade. Like, it's got a pretty mangled yeah. thing going on here, the rip. But um, they're fairly inexpensive, usually around 100 to $200 in that lower grade. I got it like a VG copy for about 100 bucks. So, yeah, you know, it's not too bad. Yeah, comparison. Um, so, for pre code horror, that's pretty good. Um, there's a couple issues where, you know, they're a little bit more expensive, but you know, fairly, fairly affordable. So that's my my little lot of comics to show. <laughs> okay. Um, so next, um, do you have more to show in this one, or do we want to do more in your? I've got. I've got I'm. Go, I'm going to show you something which is quite unusual, and um, it could be of interest to you, Alan, if you want to become okay. a werewolf. Oh, okay. Um, okay. That's yeah. always good. Okay, this is a very unusual comic. This is um, Spellbound, okay? Now, this is bought from a company called L. Miller & Company in Hackney. So they produced mm -hmm. comics in the UK, a bit like uh, Alan Class, but they were before Alan Class. Actually, Alan Class bought, bought them when they went into receivership. So they produced okay. comics between about 1948 and about 1963. So oh, wow. Yeah, so this this dates I reckon from towards the end of that. So I think this is probably 63, 64, something like that. Um, and um, I just picked it. I did wasn't I, I just got it in a lot of old comics. You know, I bought a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's quite interesting. Again, it's reprints from uh, and there's some of the artwork in this. I just love some of it. I mean, this is not what I was going to show you, but just looking at the you know I love some of this. Um, Atomic Age. Yeah, yeah. Atomic Age. Yeah, yeah, it's really great. Yeah. Um, so there's a great page here, um, which is the reason I've I've got brought this here. It's called How to Become a Werewolf. Okay. Oh, nice. That's yeah. useful. And it, and so if you don't know a werewolf who's prepared to bite you, um, it tells <laughs> <laughs> it tells you. Yeah. Because it's hard to find werewolves sometimes. Yeah, okay. it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're not always. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, it says the person desirous on becoming a werewolf must be in earnest and a believer in the super physical phenomena. The first thing you've got to do is to go to an uninhabited place when the moon is strong. Um, then on a perfectly level piece of ground at midnight, you've got to draw a circle of not less than seven feet. Um, well, very precise. You've okay. Got to get a cauldron and you've got to start boiling water. Um, and as the water boils, you've got to throw in three of the following parsley, opium, hemlock, henbane, saffron, poppy seed um, or solanium. And then you've got to say a special mystical verse that I'm not going to read out on here because I don't think I because should. you don't want to be a werewolf. <laughs> I, well, I don't want to be a werewolf and I don't really want to let people know how to become werewolves. So I'm not going to read that out. And the next step after you said this special, special um, phrase, the next step is to take off your shirt 
and to smear your body with the fat of a newly killed animal, preferably a cat. Okay. Um, wow, a cat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then with a girdle made of wolf skin, uh, you've got to wrap that around you and kneel in front of the circle and wait for the appearance of a great unseen power. Okay. Um, so that's wow. how you become a werewolf. If you alternatively, there is an alternative method, which is to eat a wolf's brain. There you go. Okay. That might be easier. I think that'd be easier than all that other stuff. Like, I don't know. I think you'd get in trouble or you would uh, maybe get high if you like put a whole bunch of opium and, uh, <laughs> and like heroin. <laughs> Basically, you're like going to be like uh, kind of messed up there. Um, <laughs> seems like a pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, my local butcher doesn't sell wolf brain, but, um, you know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not sure where you get wolf brain, but, you know, it's probably out there somewhere. Ask. <laughs> You have wild wolves in Canada? Of course. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Ah, there you go. Even in my neighborhood, like um, I'm just outside of the city. Um, but, you know, it's a, still a pretty big town, right? But um, we get like foxes and coyote. Oh. That just okay. randomly walk through the neighborhood. And the funny thing is they're so casual. Like they, they like, you know, you think, oh, they would run away and like, freak out like when they see a human but no they're just like oh whatever <laughs> they kind of casually wave and just sort of walk by and it's like okay like we were like i i saw a fox it was literally maybe five feet away yeah it was like a big one and it was like kind of looked like almost like a coyote because it was so big um fox are usually kind of wimpy looking but yeah they are this one was quite big and it just was yeah whatever <laughs> it's like it's just really casual i don't know um it's kind of strange um so i'm gonna i'm not sure if i've done this one but i'm gonna ask my trivia question to you oh, okay right um but i'm not sure if i've done it before well i'll tell you when you show me it um it's one that i really like so i, I if i've done it before just tell me and then i won't do it no you haven't Really? Okay, I thought, wow, geez, I always go on about this one, so. Okay. Because it's like one of my one of my favorite uh, golden age uh, buys, I don't know. Because it's a nice high grade, like it was one of my first really high grade golden age. Yeah, it looks so really nice. like Is that a cowboy it's, one? Um, yeah, it's a cowboy one. I got a cover here because it says what it is. Um, oh yeah, here. Okay, <laughs> I got to cover a couple of places. Okay, so. Um, it's uh, Tim Holt. Right. Okay? Yeah, never heard of and him. And it says, you never heard of him. Okay, probably. I wouldn't doubt it that you would have heard of him. Uh, um, Cowboy star of the movies. Okay, not many people know this book. It's, it's a really nice book, actually. Yeah, it looks Because nice. it's, it's got a nice cover, and it's got the, the nice back cover. Oh, nice. You know, it's not, Very nice. It doesn't That's have cool. some ad on the back. It's like some kind of really nice photo cover. Yeah, yeah, no, it's really nice. It looks very good and, in the lab. Yeah, it's um, and it's a high grade. It's like an eight, eight. eight, you know, for it's like one of the highest graded copies of this, and it was still cheap. It's like two to three hundred dollar book. Yeah, it's nice in but, this grade. Yeah, yeah, you know, so it's not a it's not a really expensive book. Um, the funny thing is, uh, it just happens to have a pretty major first appearance. Okay, is it somebody from the movies? Um, they kind of had him in one movie. Uh, okay. the character, but um, not right. really. Okay. I wouldn't right. say so. Uh, which comic? Com but Tim Holt is from the, the movies, but yeah. Okay. Is he a cowboy character? Yes. Yes, definitely a cowboy character. Okay. So, um, and remember my theme. My theme, which is different than yours, is not werewolves. Uh, uh, okay. Is it the original Ghost Rider? Yes, it is. Ah. <laughs> okay, but this is not where he makes his first appearance as the Ghost Rider. This okay. is like, so what happens is the character that becomes the Ghost Rider is yeah. the Calico Kid. Okay? Ah, and this is okay. the first appearance of the Calico Kid. Number 11 is the first appearance of the Ghost Rider. So, yes, it's the original Ghost Rider, and I'll show that. I actually okay. have, this is the original Ghost Rider. Yeah, nice. 
Yeah, not a bad story, actually. I read it. I actually read it today because I'm like, I, sh I really got to read my own comics. Um, so, yeah, so I read this. It was quite good. It's like he's not really a ghost. He just pretends to be a ghost. Yeah. You yeah. know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, in the comic, he has like um, a connection to all these other dead uh, heroes of the West where they basically train him. Like, you know, he gets trained by Wilder and he gets trained by... Um, uh hitchcock uh, Hitch, uh what's wild bill uh, buffalo bill wild bill Hitch, hiccup yeah and uh and what's her name calamity jane and all those ones okay. so nice so he gets trained by them by all their special skills right yeah and he gets all the, so he's basically an incorporation of all their talents <laughs> so it's kind of cool it's like you know it's kind of cool and then he dresses up as a ghost and goes Ooh, yeah, yeah. i'm a ghost um <laughs> it's kind of silly um, and then that's that's the 50s. That's a, the, his first original series. And yeah. then his second series is this one. Oh, I like that cover. Yeah. It's a really, this is um, uh, Fazetta, I believe. Fazetta cover. Oh, well, that's And I'm totally, no, it isn't. I'm totally wrong on that. So just ignore that, that was, that, that was wrong. It's uh, actually both are the same guy that did both covers. It's Avers. Avers, yeah. I've heard of him. Dick Avers. Dick Avers, yeah. Yeah, so... So I, I, I messed up. I know that Fazetta did other covers. So in the uh, Tim Holt series, Fazetta did the original covers with the Ghost Rider. So I thought it was going to be him again, but it wasn't. Uh, so sorry about that. So it's Avers. <laughs> okay. So but that was my one. So you got it, sadly. <laughs> so, okay. Good job. So, um, should I ask? I'm going to ask you another question. Okay. Just um, one of the things I kind of wanted to do, and you mentioned, well, actually, you wanted to do this, and I think it's a good idea, is to ask each other questions, kind of, kind of have more of a discussion. Yeah. So one of the questions I I, I saw, you know, I see you talk about Al Al uh, Alan Class a lot. Yeah. Yeah, Alan Class, um, and I I'm like, you know. I know, like, actually, it's kind of cool looking series, right? Yeah. So I'm just wondering, like, you, you mentioned in one of your videos recently where you're saying, hey, you know, these books are really going up for some weird reason. Um, and do you think it's you that's having that influence or what What do you think's going on there? What? <laughs> Alan, I've got about 130 viewers. I don't think it's me influencing the market. Um, I, I, you know, it's... Um, the, the price has definitely been going up even since I started collecting it. I had some mm -hmm. already, but I then started going into it, at, you know, probably about February, March time. I thought, right, I like these Alan Class comics. I'm going to start uh, buying them. You know, um, you know, I like them because they reprint, they reprint the American comics from the 1950s and 60s, but you can get them at much lower prices and generally in better condition um, than you would generally get some yeah. American comics. And, and, and they didn't come that much later, did they? they no, they were like... some of them were really, I mean, I showed one earlier this week, which had the um, Captain America, uh, the origin of the Red Skull and the Captain. Yeah, that was cool. That was yeah, the Captain America story where he parachutes into London and tries to kill Winston Churchill, um, which yeah. I, I think must have been literally a few months after, because the original came out in 64. For 65 and the Alan Class one was out in 65 so I think it must have been literally uh, reprinted maybe a couple months later or yeah, something literally or? two or three months after the original came out so definitely the first ever reprint of um, of those comics and and you know it sits behind a cover that doesn't say anything about the fact that you've got this great you know Marvel trilogy in there and that's one of the things I like about these, because when mm -hmm. I, I when I sort of cleaned and pressed it and I opened it up to read it through and then I suddenly discover, you know, some classic Captain America in there that, you know, wasn't on mm -hmm. any of the databases, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, know. that's that that's a pretty major issue that it has. You, I think it's you said the first three stories. Yeah, like it's, the got, full, it's almost got the, the origin of the Red Skull and then it's got the... Um, the Red Skull then sort of hypnotizes Captain America and takes him off to London to kill Winston Churchill. And then in the third one, Captain America, of course, doesn't kill Winston Churchill. He saves him. 
and uh, you know mm -hmm. that, that's the story. Uh, yeah, but there are three. You know, early. I think tales of suspense was it? I can't. Hear, tales of tales to astonish, or one of the. That's where Captain America appeared with uh, in a double. It was a double feature, wasn't it, with Iron Man and Captain America? I think. Well, one thing I actually, you know, not to like, you you shouldn't really put yourself down in terms of your your potential influence. <laughs> like, um, I noticed, like, you know, you only need two buyers. You only need two buyers to drive any price up. Well, that's true. Like, you know, one thing that I used to see is like, you know, I collect like really obscure stuff sometimes, right? Yeah. And it just happens that one other buyer, one other crazy buyer out there will... <laughs> will also buy that obscure thing yeah and then it's like all of a sudden that 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 one thing that was normally like a hundred bucks you know nobody really cared about it well there's just this one other dude that seems to care and then we bid up for it right yeah and it's just that's all it takes right so i've seen that many times where like some random comic channel like you know has maybe a hundred subs or 200 subs and they just say oh i really like this comic and then all of a sudden it's like oh man that's gonna be like it's gonna be really hard to get <laughs> it's like the comic that i liked you know so um it's i've seen it a lot where they they'll buy it right after right after it watching is, those videos yeah. well i hope it's not because it's quite annoying because i have been able to pick these up for you know literally two to three th it's gone from being two to three pounds an issue to about five pounds an issue um, but this one I was this one I was looking at it was it all all this year it would have gone for two to three pounds it was nothing special about it it was in mm -hmm. okay condition and it was an early-ish one I like the ones that are mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. pre-1971 the, with the shilling um, on them mm -hmm. and, uh, it was one of those and it was one I hadn't got and it was it it was sitting at one pound 80 you know and it had been it was a 10-day listing it had been there and I went in with five minutes to go um, you know, and I thought I'll I'll bid six pounds fifty. I want it, so I'm going to go mm -hmm. quite a bit over what it's currently sitting at, which was one pound eighty. And I bid, I put a bid in, so I, I got my bid all ready. Last ten seconds, I put my bid in six pounds fifty. Thought it's going to be mine. No, yeah, yeah. A bid came in at twenty at uh, nineteen pounds eighty. What? And then it's that, so that means there was two probably other people. There, there were, were two people. other people. Yeah, and another guy came in at twenty quid. Believe yeah, it. yeah. I actually I've gotten sort of like not, though my channel is still not a that big of a channel. To tell you the truth, um, uh, you know I get nervous whenever <laughs> I mention a comic. Okay, so what I've been doing lately, and this is like sorry people watching this show, uh, <laughs> but what I've been doing lately is I won't mention a comic that I want until after I have it because yeah. I'm just worried I'm creating my own competition when buying. Yeah. Yeah. Because like I'm looking for really obscure stuff, and like it's like, oh man, don't buy it, please don't bid on it. Like, like there's a big auction that's happening tonight. Like when we record this is Sunday, right? Yeah. So there's a big auction tonight on Heritage that I'm just watching a bunch of things. I'm I'm not even going to mention it to anyone <laughs> like, until 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 the bidding's over because there's just so many cool <laughs> cool things that I just don't want people bidding on, right? So. Yeah, maybe no. I should have a disclaimer. You're not allowed to bid on these for a week or something. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. yeah, when I did that video, I, I showed some of the other ones on my watch list, and I thought, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Because, yeah, you know, now some other people are going to go and see the ones I'm looking at. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's and that's what people are looking for. So actually, what I've been doing is um, I have like a paywall, you know, like the members yes, only yeah, section. Yeah, I thought you did that. Is yeah. And I actually put some of the things that I'm looking for back there. Well, that's fine because then people are getting real value from paying paying for that content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I'm shy about saying it stuff now because like, it's like, oh man, I'm gonna get that bit. So yeah, it's it is the thing. It's it does happen. Seems like um, actually, it's funny. Like I I see it a lot with Comic Tom. Like the bigger channels, obviously, it's going to happen, right? Yeah. You know, some really like really obscure comic, uh, and just the price just goes up. Actually, I I just won a really obscure comic today, that um, they've been mentioning so many times on these channels, like on these like like yeah, comic yeah. toms yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. 
It's called Blip Number One. Oh, I've seen it. It's got that nerd boy just looking. I mean, the cover is yep. one of the worst covers I've ever seen. Oh yeah, it's like, but it's like that total eighties, yeah, uh, like arcade uh, cover. Yeah. you know what I mean. It's yeah. like got that. Yeah. But it's the first appearance of Mario, so it's like a really great comic. And that that comic has become so hot, like it's like I've seen it go for um, in high grade, like a thousand bucks. It's crazy. You know, it's just crazy. Yeah. Um, somebody had it like, like for 300 or best offer. Yeah. And so I offered like a low ball offer, like a hundred bucks <laughs> and he accepted. Oh, I was wow. like, Oh, that's a good buy. Wow. I was like, yeah, good buy. So sometimes you can get lucky. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So yeah. So, um, we'll go into your show, I guess next. Okay. All right. So, um, Wait, 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 before, wait, 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 before, oh. I got to say, I got to do my little exit. <laughs> um, so just, just so you know, people watching this, this is just part one. We're going to have more discussions, more cool things that we're going to show on Mark's channel. So definitely check out part two. I will link below um, to his channel. And you can, if it's not in the link below, just go to the description. It will be definitely there. So um, check out Mark's channel. Really great channel. And, and, <laughs> and so I got Alan's guess who this week and I, you need to check in to see whether he gets my guess who on my channel. Cause I, if he doesn't get it, I think I'm going to draw back even with Alan. Cause I think he's, he's one ahead at the moment on the guess. I'm one ahead. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. So if he doesn't get it, um, we could be drawing even again. So it's worth having a watch. Okay, cool. Okay. okay, so see you on another channel. <laughs> okay. <laughs>